Uh, good afternoon, uh, Michael uh, Cunningham. Thank you for having accepted this interview uh, with lecturer Amado Tufar. Thank you. We are pleased to be able to ask you a few questions regarding your book, A Wild Swan or Other Tales, and in French, Il vécut heureux beaucoup d'enfants, et puis, published by Edition Belfort. So my, fir my first question, why did you want to write this kind of book? I mean, so different and so original from the others. You never want to write the same book twice. You've written one book, it's time to write something else. Um, but some writers do. That, do some that. writers do, yeah. and some writers don't. And <laughs> I'm one of the writers who doesn't. <laughs> yeah. um, partly because, what, where's the fun in writing the same book over again? I always want to try something new. Um, and. I honestly don't know where I got the idea to write, sort of rewrite my favorite fairy tales from when I was a child. It just, it's one of the mysteries. There are things about writing that you can explain, and there are things that you cannot explain. And one of the things I can never explain is why this book, why now, maybe Maybe I'm getting to the age where I'm entering my second childhood and I'm preparing myself. <laughs> Why did you want to insert illustrations, drawings in your book? Oh, it's a book of fairy tales. Fairy tales have illustrations. Yeah? Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you can't write... You, uh, my other books are unillustrated, yeah. but it seems that a book of fairy tales has pictures, clearly. Yes, but it, it, it was for... For the adults, so uh, the, the these are not fairy tales for children, and the illustrations are not for children. These yeah. are fairy tales. These are fairy tales for adults who were once children. We all were, of course. Yeah. But these are fairy tales for adults who loved fairy tales when they were kids. Mm. They're not cynical. Yeah. They're not disdainful of yeah. these great old stories. I just wanted to sort of <laughs> rethink them a little bit. Yeah, yeah, but it's weird. Yeah, kind of, um, your approach is uh, very uh, weird and uh, sounds uh, different and uh, interesting. Well, you know, as well. we already have the fairy tales. So you want to do something different with them. I wanted to bring out more of the darkness, more yeah. of the sexuality, yeah. more of the sort of human complexity, because fairy tales are great, mm. certainly to me, but the characters are yeah, simple. very one-dimensional. Mm. You know, there's the prince, there's the princess, there's the witch, and I thought, what about these stories? with more complicated characters. Mm -hmm. I mean, what if we understood why the witch acts the way she does? Yeah. Why did you choose uh, Yuko Shimizu to illustrate your book? Yuko Shimizu is a brilliant illustrator and frankly, I found her on the internet. I googled illustrators. It was difficult to find yeah. an illustrator who was do what I had in mind, which is pictures that would be beautiful, but a little perverse, a mm. little edgy. Most illustrators do children's books. Mm. They do kind of pretty pictures, and we weren't coming up with anything. And I was like, ooh, you know. Yeah. You can Google anything. And I saw Yuko's work, and I thought, oh, this is exactly what I have in mm. mind. And, she, and my publisher sent her the book, and to my astonishment, she said, yes, I will do it. Yeah. How did you meet him? Did you meet him? Uh, it's, a, it's a woman. Um, we only met after she agreed okay. to do the illustrations, mm -hmm. um, and she said, what did I have in mind? And I said, all I have in mind is whatever you want to do. I don't want to give you any instructions. Yeah. I want you to simply choose the images that strike you mm. and go. I, I was wondering, 
coming back to your big success hours. Mm -hmm. Sorry, mm -hmm. because no, that, that, no, okay. that, that's fine. I understand yeah, that was the big success. Okay, adapted for the cinema. Uh, where where did your passion for Virginia Woolf come from? Virginia Woolf was one of, was the Mrs. Dalloway in particular. Yeah, that, that novel of hers happens to have been the first great book I read when I was young. Oh yeah. How old? How old? Uh, I was 15. 15, um, yeah. I didn't read it for school. I read it mm. because a girl I had a crush on was reading it. And it showed me for the first time what words on paper could mean, how they could move you. I had never been so affected mm. by a book before. And it didn't turn me into a writer at 15, but it did begin to turn me into a reader. And I suspect that anyone who reads probably had a first book. Yeah. Maybe not a great book, but a first, almost like your first kiss. The book that opened it up for you. The book that showed yeah. you how much books could mean to you. Uh, yeah. But my following question was, what does she represent for you? She was your kind she of She was my mentor. first kiss. Virginia Woolf was my, my kiss. first kiss. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Yeah. And she was fabulous, and she was hot. <laughs> that has we don't we, that has not been remembered by you. Uh, you were a, a key actor in different causes, such as active. Are you still involved in causes, and which ones? Well, yes, but not not the kind of direct activism act. Not the kind of direct activism of ACT UP. ACT UP doesn't really exist anymore, and I'm not... I'm not... We, we, are, no, we, are, we are no longer invading Wall Street and going to jail. Um, but maybe... My, my, what I do now is much simpler. I volunteer for a group called God's Love We Deliver, and we make meals and take them to people with AIDS. Okay. Mm. It's, it's not as dramatic, but it's important. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Michael. It was an honor for me. My so, pleasure. Bye. Yes. Bye.